Yeah. So here we have a question on peroxy linkages. Let's see what the question says. Calculate the number of peroxy linkages in H3PO5. Okay. Okay. And you have options 1 to 0 and none of the above. Okay. Okay. See, there is a standard protocol. There is a formula which you can use to derive the number of peroxy linkages. But let me tell you a cheat code first. Do you know the name of H3PO5? The name of H3PO5 is peroxy monophosphoric acid. I hope you are able to guess what is the right answer now. But still, if we do not know the name, a new compound comes in front of us. How are we going to proceed? Let's see this. You want to calculate the number of peroxy linkages, right? So, number of peroxy linkages. This is equal to, there is a formula, there is a, there is a formula for that. And it says, the formula is calculated oxidation state, OS is oxidation state, minus maximum oxidation state of central atom, divided by 2, divided by 2 when there is one central atom. If there is more than one, if there is two central atom, then it is going to be divided by one only. But here we have phosphorus P as one central atom. So the formula is calculated oxidation state minus maximum oxidation state divided by 2. Right. Okay. Let's, let's put the values calculated oxidation state. We have to calculate it right. So H3PO5. Let's assume the oxidation state of phosphorus to be X. You have 3 hydrogen. So plus 1 into 3 plus X plus 5 into minus 2. We are assuming every oxygen to be minus 2. That is the general oxidation state of oxygen. And keeping that in mind, if you calculate x, 5 to 10, 3, 7, it is coming out to be plus 7. Let's put the value. And phosphorus, phosphorus, which family? Nitrogen family. What is the general electron configuration? NS2, NP3 and phosphorus is third period, right? So, if you write the electronic configuration or the valence shell electronic configuration of phosphorus, it is going to be 3s2, 3p3. 3p is half filled, you know, all these things. And if you write it this way, you can clearly observe that the maximum oxidation state of phosphorus is going to be plus 5, right? So, this value is plus 5. You have 5 valence electrons, okay? Now, if you calculate, this is going to be plus 7 minus plus 5 divided by 2. So, this value is 1. Now, do you understand the importance of this mono? 1? Yes. Answer is 1. If you want to see the structure, H3PO5 is basically a derivative of H3PO4, right? H3PO4 is what? It is phosphoric acid. And let me draw the structure of phosphoric acid as well as peroxy monophosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid looks like this. You have three OH and one double bond O, right? So this is your phosphoric acid. And if you want to form H3PO5, then it is going to be like this. You have one peroxo linkage, right? Where the oxidation state of oxygen is minus one, right? Okay. And with that, you now it is, I hope this is crystal clear that H3PO5 has one per oxy linkage, right? And with that, the answer is option A and this question is over. Thank you. Yeah, so here we have a question on shapes of molecule. Let's see what the question says. Among the following, the molecule that is bent or V shape is R. Okay, so we have to focus on the bent shape, right? The bent shape, V shape. And in the options we have CO2, NO2, ClO2 and D says B and C above. Okay, okay. So we have to draw the geometry or the shape for each, each and every one of them and analyze what is going to be the right answer. Let's see. Let's talk about CO2 first, the very first option, option A. And for drawing the geometry or the structure or the shape, let's, let's take the help of the hybridization concept. It says H is equal to 1 by 2 V plus M 
minus C plus A. V is what? Valence electron of the central atom. M is what? The monovalent atom present in the molecule. What is C? The charge of cation. And what is A? The charge of anion. Right? Let's put the value for CO2. 1 by 2. Valence electron of central atom. Who is the central atom? Carbon is the central atom. And valence electrons are 4 or 6. 6 is the atomic number. 4 is the valence electrons. Right? 4. Monovalent atom. So, should I take oxygen? You have 2 oxygen. If I write 2 here, I am going to get the wrong answer. Why? 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 The question is why? Because monovalent oxygen is divalent. What are the examples for monovalent? Hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and others. So, monovalent is 0. There is no charge. So, 4 plus 0 minus 0 plus 0. It is going to be 4 by 2. That is 2. And we know that when it is hybridization is 2, it is sp hybridized. And sp is linear in geometry as well as shape. So, if you draw CO2, this is going to look like this. Right? It is linear. So, option A is not going to be the right answer. Moving on to the next part. NO2. NO2. Wow, NO2. You know what is special about NO2? It is a single electron species. So, let me draw the structure of NO2 for you. NO2 looks like this. And you have a single electron, right? It is just like the free radical. The point is, the point is, the question is whether this free radical or whether this single electron is present in pure p orbital or is it present in a hybrid orbital. If you can answer this question, then you can easily decide that NO2 is linear like CO2 or has a bent shape. Okay. Okay. Take one concept as a gift for you. Nitrogen has two oxygen attached to it, right? There is the nitrogen, there is the two oxygen. Now, these two oxygen are more electronegative as compared to nitrogen. So, they are going to attract the shared pair of electron. And because of that, there will be some partial positive charge on nitrogen, right? What I say? Oxygen. More electronegative attracts shared pair of electron, which generates a partial positive charge on the nitrogen. Okay. And because of this partial positive charge, it will attract this single electron towards itself. The energy will be lowered and the orbital will become hybridized. That means this single electron is present in a hybrid orbital. And that is why. It is sp2 hybridized, right? And what is the shape in geometry for the sp2 hybridized orbital or sp2 hybridized atom? The geometry is trigonal planar. Now, because you have two atoms and one is with a single electron, so this is going to be nothing but bent shape or V shape. Perfect. So, B is correct. We have to check for C as well because we have one option as B and C. ClO2, ClO2. Let's talk about ClO2 here. ClO2 is again a single electron species. And if you draw the structure of ClO2, chlorine has seven valence electron, right? So, two, four, six, and seven. Again, ClO2, See, if even if you do not apply the concept of those electronegative elements attached with the central atom and they are going to and they are going to pull the electrons towards itself and then there is a positive charge, partial positive charge on the central atom which decreases the energy of the single electron and because of that, that orbital become hybridized. If Even if you do not apply this concept, ClO2 has a lone pair, right? And there will be some lone pair bond pair repulsion which is going to push these bonds away from, from 180 degree, right? They are not going to be 180 degree. So, this is not linear. This is again a bent shape or V shape. And you know, there is one more important thing. You have ClO2, but you never form Cl2O4 as a dimer of ClO2. Why? Because of the presence of this lone pair. The lone pair, lone pair repulsion is very high in ClO2 and that is why Cl2O4 is never formed. Instead of Cl2O4, Cl2O5 is formed. But there, that is a different concept. Let's not go deep into that. The point is, ClO2 is again going to have a bent shape. Perfect. 
and if you if we come back to the options option c is also correct that means both b and c have bend shape v shape that that means option d is going to be the correct answer to this beautiful question and with that we conclude this question thank you yeah so here we have a question from the charles law let's see what the question says the coefficient of volume expansion of a gas is oh, 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 what is this coefficient of a volume expansion of a gas basically basically this is nothing but an application of charles law let me first state what charles law says charles law is the volume of a gas increases or decreases by 1 by 273 of its initial value on increasing or decreasing the temperature by 1 degree c okay 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 do not worry i will write it once this is the statement of charles law statement of charles law right i will write it in words the statement is the volume try to understand all the aspects of it the volume increases or decreases by 1 by 273 of initial value initial value of volume when when you increase or decrease the temperature by 1 degree c 1 degree c right this is what the statement of charles law is but you will say no no sir we have we have studied charles law so many times this is this does not looks like the charles law i'll tell you what you have studied in 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 like gas laws is that is the application of charles law that is what we derive from charles law just to make our work easier i'll write that as well it is volume is directly proportional to temperature at a constant pressure constant pressure right this is how you know charles law and when you when you make an equal to sign it look like v2 by v1 will be equal to t2 by t1 right this is how you have seen charles law okay okay let me do something let me do some modification to convert this particular formula into the statement that i have written on the screen okay come here we say v2 by v1 is equal to t2 by t1 right let me say that the first condition is 0 degree c temperature and the second condition is t degree c right so can i say v t degree c by v 0 degree c will be equal to t2 temperature is what t degree c and because t2 by t1 has to be put in absolute terms so the unit has to be kelvin so if i convert degree c into kelvin how i'm going to do that it will be like 273 plus t right and t1 is 0 degree c and if you convert 0 degree c into kelvin it is going to be 273 kelvin right if i if i write it as 273 by 273 plus t by 273 this will be fine right i have separated them this will become 1 plus 1 by 273 into t into t will be equal to v t degree c upon v 0 degree c i hope this much is fine no rocket science simple steps okay finally i'll write that v at t degree c volume at t degree c will be equal to volume at 0 degree c into 1 plus 1 by 273 into temperature any problem any doubt crystal clear now observe this formula right and read the statement the statement says the volume increases or decreases by 1 by 273 of initial value what was the initial value what we have derived that is the volume at 0 degree c on increase or decrease of the temperature by 1 degree c i'll show you this if you put the value of temperature as 1 degree c there will be 1 plus 1 by 273 so initial value was volume at 0 degree celsius 
and there will be an increase of 1 by 273 times of the initial value of volume, right? This is what you can observe from this formula. So, keeping that in mind, this 1 by 273 is known as the coefficient of volume expansion of a gas, right? So, the correct answer is option A. I hope you enjoyed this beautiful question. And with that, we conclude this question. Thank you. Yeah, so here we have a question from hydrolysis, basically the pH calculation. Let's see what the equation says. The pH of a 0 0.02 molar ammonium chloride solution will be, and you are given with some data that Kb of NH4OH is 10 to the power minus 5, and the value of log 2 is 0 0.301. Perfect, perfect, perfect. If you, if you focus on ammonium chloride, right? Ammonium chloride is a combination of a, a weak base and a strong acid. What are the weak base and, and the acids involved? Ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH, plus HCl. Ammonium hydroxide is, of course, the weak base and HCl is the strong acid. It is a, it is a salt of a weak base and a strong acid. So we need a formula for that. We have a direct formula. We'll use that. But before that, let's revise the concept of, of like, Let's take both the cases where we have weak base, strong acid and strong base, weak acid. Let's take both the cases. Weak base plus strong acid, right? Because the acidic part is strong, the pH is going to be less than 7. The formula will be pH is equal to 7 minus half pKb plus log C, right? Because it is a strong acid part. So, the final pH is going to be acidic and it is going to be less than 7. Makes sense. The other one, the strong base plus weak acid, right? Because this time the basic part is strong, pH is going to be greater than 7. The formula will be pH is equal to 7 plus half pKa, the acid part is weak, pKa plus log C. Make sense? Now, you might say, no, no, sir, we have not seen this formula. We have seen some other formula. So, that is nothing but the pKw value, right? Let me, let me write that as well, not to, not to upset you. So, it is like half pKw minus pKb minus log C. This is what the formula is, right? But we know that at 25 degrees Celsius, Till the time it is not stated, pKw is taken as 14, 14 by 27, the formula becomes this, right? So this is the formula and, and because our case is weak base and strong acid, so let me remove the other one. You can note it down in your notebook. So let's use this one. You have pH 7 minus half pKb. What is the formula for pKb? pKb is nothing but minus of log kb and the value of kb given for the basis 10 to the power minus 5. So minus log 10 to the power minus 5. Minus 5 will come uh, out of the bracket. So minus minus plus and this will be like 5 log 10 and you know log 10 base 10 is going to be 1. So this will be 5. So 1 by 2 the value of pkb is coming out to be 5 plus log c. And the concentration is 0 0.02 molar. So can I write 0 0.02 as 2 into 10 raised to power minus 2, right? So I have to calculate the value of log C, that is log 2 into 10 raised to power minus 2. Can I do that? Log A into B is what? Log A plus log B. This is the property of logarithm. So log 2 plus log 10 to the power minus 2. You know the value of log 2? This is like what? 0 0.301 plus log 10 to the power minus 2 again the same property log x to the power n is n log x so log 10 to the power minus 2 is minus 2 into log 10 and minus 2 into log 10 minus 2 into 1 log 10 is 1 right so this is minus 2 so if you're gonna solve this 7 minus 5 to 3 3 minus 0.3 3 plus 0.3 is 3.3 
half of 3.301 right and if you're going to solve this okay okay let's divide this 7 minus 2 1 13 6 10 5 1.65 approximately right 7 minus 1.65 is what 7 minus 1 is 6 and 5.35 is what we are getting and option d is exactly matching with what we have calculated so option d is going to be the correct answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you yeah so here we have a question on types of aromatic compound let's see what the question says what kind of aromatic compound is this and there is a figure given to us there is a compound drawn here and the option says benzenoid non-benzenoid homocyclic or heterocyclic see everything was fine till the time nitrogen was not there the moment nitrogen comes in the cycle in the ring the molecule becomes heterocyclic so the answer is option d but let's explore the other options as well benzenoid what are the benzenoid organic compounds basically something containing benzene I'll give you an example like naphthalene. If you draw naphthalene, it has two rings, and this is how you draw naphthalene. It is basically an example of benzenoid organic compound. Non-benzenoid organic compound. Okay. Like, 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 see this. This is cyclopentadienyl anion, but you'll say, no, sir, we don't want anion, we need a neutral compound. Okay, I'll give you an example of a neutral compound. This is what propone is, right? And you have three pi bonds. So this is an example of a non-benzenoid organic compound. Let's talk about homocyclic. Again, benzene is a good example. Homocyclic, where all the atoms are same. Homo is same, homocyclic, same atoms. All the atoms are carbon basically, because we are talking about the organic compounds. Heterocyclic, one is already there. If you want to see other examples, the other examples of heterocyclic is like pyridine nitrogen in the chain you want to see a heterocyclic where nitrogen is not there where some other element is there take this as example furan right these are all examples of heterocyclic aromatic compound so option d is the correct answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you